In this video, I'm out in the field and I'm gonna be showing you how you can use those empty negative spaces to actually improve your landscape photography composition. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the channel where I post weekly videos on how you can improve your landscape photography through infield and post-processing tutorials like this one and then also gear reviews. So if you're into landscape photography, consider subscribing. Now in this video specifically, I'm showing you how to use those negative spaces, those empty negative spaces that are oftentimes so boring when you get back onto your computer at home and look at your photo files and you're like, well, that's kind of an empty photo and pretty boring. How do you use those to really create an impactful composition for your landscape photography? Well, I'm faced with the same challenge this morning and I thought I'd record this video to help you guys out and show you how to use those situations to your advantage. Now, came out this morning and the sunrise was supposed to be pretty good. Some lingering clouds hanging around in the area right before the sunrise hit all those clouds dispersed and you're left with just a blank open sky. How to use that best? Well, first let's talk about what is negative space. Negative space in an image is really just empty space in the composition. It can be like skies, it can be blank colors against a hard surface of a wall or something like that, but they're basically just empty space where nothing exists. You don't have foreground, you don't have subject matter, you don't have complementary subjects, you don't really have anything going on outside of your subject matter and blank space. So that's primarily what negative space is. Now, how do you use it to improve your landscape photography? Well, that's where like this location comes in where we're at today. We're at the Natchez Trace Bridge near Nashville, Tennessee, and it's really cold this morning, actually, if you can't see my breath. But you can use subjects like this man-made bridge in a landscape to your advantage to cover up negative space. A lot of times photographers talking about filling the frame. How do you fill the frame with the subject matter? How do you impact the composition with the subject? And you can do that with this and really create like distorted lines in your composition using a wide angle lens like I'm doing here today. It's really easy to do. All right guys, so here's the composition that we're working with and if you back off the subject matter, which is the bridge, you're left with leading lines coming in from the bottom corner and also the top corner coming in. You have some really compelling uh, lines coming in that are really directing you towards the main subject matter which is the bridge, just coming in off of the edge of this and using that wide angle lens to distort that and stretch the viewer's look on those leading lines on the edges. Now, you may be thinking, yeah, you can still see some negative space, but really, the technique of using negative space and compositions is, you see, we still have a large chunk of negative space in this window right here. You can use that with the bridge in front of it because you're not getting stuck in that space. You're using lines to lead you to the main subject matter of the bridge. So when you're using negative space and you're seeing it in your composition, especially in a large chunk like this, you want to add subject matter or foreground or leading lines to help you get out of that space. The goal is to escape the negative space, not get stuck within it like you would if this bridge wasn't here and you just had a blank sky. Now you can also use negative spaces in other ways like revealing your subject matter within a composition. This is one of my favorite techniques to use, especially when I'm adding people into my frame as the subject. So using negative spaces to frame up your subject matter better is a great way to use negative space to your advantage as a landscape photographer because a lot of landscape photographers see negative space and they get nervous and they back off the composition. However, when you know how to use it and you know how to frame up your subject matter to either hide negative space or include subjects within a negative space, that's when your photography starts getting more complex, more creative, and you start taking better images overall. 
Now the main thing to remember about negative spaces and when you're using them in your composition, not to force negative space into the image just because now you know how to use it. You need to work the landscape instead of having the landscape work you. You need to get out to a landscape, really inspect it and work your way all the way around the landscape, really figuring out what your composition may be, what's your subject matter, what are your foreground options, what are your leading line options, and that's when you can start to construct something and use any negative space that's in the composition that's there. This is the same thing as not including a foreground that isn't there. If you try to include a negative space within an image or a composition that doesn't necessarily have negative spaces available for you to use, that's when the image starts to become forced and your composition kind of falls apart. So if you have negative spaces, use these tips to help you forward your photography and forward your composition so that you can start taking more creative images, but then also know when not to use negative spaces. Know when not to force them. Do you have a small gap in the image. Well, maybe not including that small gap within the composition is the way to go because you have other interesting elements in there that would be more beneficial to a composition than just a small blank space. So remember, if you have wide open negative spaces, try to use those with subject matter, with silhouettes, with leading lines and foregrounds to frame up an interesting composition and fill the frame and reveal your subject within a negative space, but then also resist the urge to try to force negative spaces into a composition as well. Hey guys, I know using these tips for improving your landscape photography composition by using negative spaces within your images when they're there is really gonna help you improve your landscape photography overall and start taking better compositions and constructing better images. But for me, it's really cold right now, so I'm gonna finish up the shoot and get back inside and head in and have a cup of coffee. Hey guys, if you want more infield tutorials just like this one that are designed to help you improve your landscape photography, subscribe to this channel. Continuing watching is always an option too. If you want more infield tips, here's a playlist right here that's gonna help you do that, take better images, construct better photographs. Or if you wanna watch another video from this channel, click or tap your screen right here and it'll lead you to a video from this channel that'll help you with your photography as well.